Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 206 of the Daily Dose of Drupal. I am Adam, and today we are going to be looking at a module brought to my attention by David at Luxor.me. So David sent me an email saying, hey, you need to check out this module. And the module that he wanted me to check out was the M menu module. So let me pull it up here. I should have been a little bit more prepared for that, but um, we'll go back one screen. So here it is, the mobile sliding menu module. So what this module allows you to do is a pretty little fancy, it uses a lot of JavaScript, but it allows you to drag in and out uh, menus or sidebars on your website. Really useful, again, for mobile devices. And we're gonna get into that a little bit later. So this module does have a lot of configuration options, so make sure to pay attention. As I go through this video, I will tell you, try to go as slow as possible and explain every step. Um, but if you do have any questions at the end, make sure to let me know in the comments and I will try to get you an answer as soon as I can. But before we get down to the module, let's go head back to CodeKarate.com. Just make sure you check out everything we have going on over there. Um, we recently, re recently released our Drupal Commerce course on CodeKarate.com. Some of you might be familiar with that in the past, but now we house everything on our own website versus a separate website. So make sure to check that out. You can learn more by clicking on the block right there. Also, while you're there, check out the ebook and make sure that you do sign up, get your free sticker, send it to yourself, put it somewhere cool, and we'll send you a t-shirt if you are the coolest sticker placer out there, if that makes sense. All right, let's get to the module. So again, we're going to be using the mobile sliding menu module. Um, there's a lot of, like I said, JavaScript files required for this. Um, as far as requirements go on the Drupal side, you do need the libraries module and jQuery 1.7 or later. Um, you can use the jQuery update module as that is a requirement of the um, menu module. So make sure you download the libraries module and the jQuery update module as well. Um, and also I'm using um, Drupal 7 2.0 version of the M menu module. So make sure that if you're not using that version, you take note of that. So let's get that installed. So we're gonna go ahead and d download that file and get that into our site. And also if you head to this installation page, it tells you a bunch of other um, library files or JavaScript libraries you need to download. There's actually four of them. So they provide you all the nice links here and I'll provide all the links in the description below as well to these libraries. But what you need to start is to download all of these. Now there is one trick to this, um, and it's in the menus, M menu library version one. It says to use version 4.5 or above. Um, you'll actually only want to use the four, highest 4.0 version. So if you click on this page, it'll end up loading to here, and you do not want to download the latest version. It won't work with the module. What you need to do instead is you need to go to the menu here and do a fork me on GitHub. That'll open up the GitHub page. And then if you go over here to releases, you can look at the past releases of the M menu jQuery library. And what we want to do is we want to download version 4.7.5 or the latest version of the four um, library. Um, as you'll notice here in the commit messages, a lot gets changed when he switches over to 5.0 and that has not been appended to the module. And you'll end up having a problem of the Drupal site not being able to find the right library. So go ahead and just save yourself a lot of headaches, download version 4.7.5 and everything should work for you out of the box. You can do that by clicking on the source code there. So we're going to want to download that one. Another one we're going to want to download is the hammer.js uh, library. You can again simply do that by downloading the zip here. Another one we'll need here is the jQuery.hammer.js. Go ahead and download that one as well. And again, just so you know, I'm grabbing all of these right from here. So there's your hammer.js, your jQuery hammer.js. And then you're going to want to download this to get your icons involved. You can go ahead and download this menu dash icon moon tar.gz you can get, simply click on that link or click on the link in the description below this video and you'll be able to get that there is one small caveat to this and you can read it here you actually need to copy the styles.css file and rename it to icon moon.css 
So what we can do now is once you get it in, there's a nice graphic below that the developer put together is how your library should lay out. So underneath your sites, all libraries, you need a M menu folder. And inside of that M menu folder, there's a hammer folder, an icon moon folder, jQuery.hammer folder, and a main folder. And again, those are those four downloads. You just need to rename the root folder. So if we look here at my file structure, you'll see here, sites, all libraries. And then I have my M menu. And inside of M menu, I have my four folders. I have hammer, icon moon, jQuery.hammer and main. You have to make sure that these are exactly this way. Um, don't change the names of those or you won't be able to find the libraries. So what we needed to do is by default, it came with this style.css file. You just need to copy that and then paste a new copy and then rename that to ICO moon.css. You don't have to change anything in the CSS file. They just need to reference a different name of the CSS. So go ahead and just change that. Otherwise, by that, you can leave everything else default as it comes in the library. So again, just to reiterate, it's very important. Make sure you have these four uh, menus, hammer, ICO moon, jQuery hammer, and main. And the only one you need to do any changes to is the ICO moon library. So once you have those four installed, you can go back to your Drupal site. And again, we've already installed our module. So if we head on over to the modules page, there'll be a mobile sliding menu under the other category available to you. Go ahead and enable that and then go ahead and save your configuration. And the reason I'm not doing this step by step for you guys is sometimes those downloads take a little while when you're uploading through FTP and everything of that nature. So to speed up the video, I just didn't um, waste your time watching files get loaded up. So make sure to pause the video if you are behind. All right, so once it's installed, you can go ahead and configure that. And there's a bunch of different configuration options in the sl mobile sliding menu. We're not going to go through all of these as there's a different libraries you can add on to increase functionality. Um, I'm only going to do the basics here, but obviously experiment with them. And if you do find something cool, let us know in the comments. So the first thing you want to do is you obviously want to make sure it's enabled. So go ahead and just say yes. Um, the title, um, as you notice here, there's a left menu, right menu, top menu, and bottom menu. That's just where the menu is going to slide in from. So you can either slide in from the left, the right, the top, or the bottom. You can set that. Um, obviously, by right now, the rest of these are going to be disabled. I'm just going to work with the left menu. So make sure that's enabled. Say yes. And here's where you can set your block. Um, by default, you can do five different blocks that use this M menu functionality. We're only going to focus on the default one. So the first one you do is you select a block. It's going to grab any block that you have on your site. Um, a lot, obviously a lot of use cases for this are going to be menus. So we're going to stick with that and just use our management menu, which is this admin menu up here. Uh, parameters, you can say how deep you want the links to go. So if you have sub menus, you can say going to go two levels in or three or four or whatever. Um, I changed this from one to two. So we're going to just go into two levels. Titles, pretty uh, self-explanatory. If you want a default collapse by default, so basically hidden by default, you want that to say yes. And then this wrap option, um, just from reading it and doing a little research, if you select a different block other than a menu or a system one, you might have an issue where your content goes outside of your uh, menu wrapper. So you'd want to set that to wrap so you can contain it all. But if you're using anything under the system, you don't have to worry about that. You can keep that set to no. So scrolling down here, again, we're not touching any other blocks. We'll go under menu options. And here you'll find a bunch of different things going on. Um, again, make sure to click on this link here. It provides some documentation on all of these different options. But um, we'll go through some of the basic ones. Um, the effects, you can have it slide in if you want versus just appearing. I kind of like that. So it slides instead of just popping in. So we're going to make sure that's checked. You can make your menu go full screen. Um, definitely take note of this. I had a issue making that close when I did make it full width. So if you do have that same issue, I couldn't find a solution for that. Um, and of course you can also zoom in your menus if you want. Sliding sub menus. So these would be your links inside of your links. Um, I'll show you what that means here by keeping it to yes. 
Um, and then here we go. Here's a bunch of different other add-ons. Some of these come default with your libraries you already downloaded. Um, the ones who didn't, I'm not gonna spend any time talking about them, but they do provide really helpful documentation. A link to that to shows you how to get those up and running on your site. The few I will spend time on though is the click to open. So you can select something on your site to click. By default, there's no option or no icon to do this. So you'd have to add your own div classes or you can specify here in the selector. So what I'm saying is anytime the logo is clicked, I want this menu to appear. And again, I'm using the ID of the logo. And there's some direction down there below. Um, counters, I'm gonna count how many submenus I have so you know how many options are underneath each parent option. And I also wanna be able to drag to open. So I wanna be able to say, if I drag my mouse or my finger on my screen, the menu will appear. So I'm gonna click yes on that using the body as my um, selector. Then there's some thresholds here, basically saying I need to slide more than 100 to activate it, but I'm gonna start at the X position at 50. So I have to be on here on the left-hand side of the screen to start that or not. Again, a few more other options. You can have a footer and a header in. I have them both set to no. I don't want those to appear right now, but you can add comments, content here if you'd like. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to skip through kind of the rest of this here. Make sure to definitely check that out on your own time. Um, underneath the menu configurations, they give you pretty much full control over all of the um, class names on everything within the menu. So you have full control to be able to customize that however you'd like. Um, most of the people are obviously going to keep this by default. But if you have a reason to change any of these, they're available to you. Scrolling down here, we're just going to go ahead and save this. And we're going to go back to our home page. And you'll see by default, nothing looks like it's going to appear. I'm actually going to switch over here to my out, not logged in version. And if I click on my logo head here, oops, that's because I have it set to the admin menu. Then that person doesn't have rights. So we're actually going to hop back to do it on our admin side. But if you see here, I click on my logo head. You'll see main menu now appears. And I have nine children underneath of that. So I click on that. There's my nine children. And you can see inside of each of these, I have some other children. But you'll see when I click on a final link, it loads into the page. Now, I did turn off my overlay module. So underneath modules, there's an overlay option. So I don't want it to appear in a modal box. But default, Drupal 7 does that. Um, that has some issues with uh, this m menu module. Probably wouldn't be a huge deal if you weren't using um, on the admin side, you were only using it on the user side. But for demonstration purposes, um, I turned off that module. The other thing you can do is you can slide in. So if you notice my cursor here is going over to the left, I click and I drag, I can pull the menu back out. If I wanna close it, I just click away off of it. So if I wanna do that, I wanna hop to, and you'll notice here like, if we click on five, that slides in. That was that slide effect on sub menu thing I selected. If I didn't have that selected, it would just appear below. But if I want to get to my blocks, I can go to my blocks really quick. I can see all that stuff as well. And again, if I go back and click on my logo, it would load again. All right, so that was a lot of information, a lot going on, a lot to install. Um, so definitely make sure to thank David at Luxor.me for all the uh, advice and I guess all the support on doing this module. But um, definitely a fun module. It definitely has a lot of use cases for tablet devices, anything mobile, mobile friendly. Um, you can obviously use this on your site as well when breaking down your site via responsive web design. So make sure to check out that. Um, obviously, there's a ton of docu documentation. Excuse me. If you head on over to the m menu, m menu dot frebsite.nl. There's a ton of information there about other add-ons you can use as well. Um, so make sure you use that as you need. If you have any other questions, guys, make sure to leave them in the comments below. This module is very loaded. A lot of things can definitely happen with it um, and a lot of things you can do that I didn't show. So make sure to leave some comments. I'd be happy, happy to uh, respond to them. Also, make sure again to head on over to Code Karate, check out everything we have going on there. Submit us a module you might like us to review using the contact page. We'd love to look at those modules and see if we want to review them for the Daily Dose of Drupal. All right, thanks for tuning in for this episode. 
Until next time, happy coding.